writer, right? My, my first book was released, and uh, I think like a lot of other, especially first-time authors and everything, you know, it's, I'm hawking all the reviews on Amazon and you know, trying to figure out what everybody's thinking about my book and stuff because I, I, I need something. I need somebody to tell me that this is okay, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm pouring over reviews and stuff, and I come across uh, a review uh, of the book on Amazon that says, uh, basically, it was a one-star review. Right, uh, it was my very first negative review on, on something like that, and the comment in it said, "This story never should have been written." Okay, so obviously I'm a little devastated, <laughs> right? Um, so anyway, back up, and I'll tell you about the book a little bit. The book is this one. It was my first one called "The Unlikely Missionary from Pew Warmer to Poverty Fighter," and um, it's a uh, it's essentially the story of something I kind of stumbled on, right? Is I've been a blogger for about now for about 12 years, but just a few years at that point, uh, I started uh, started writing a little bit about poverty, right? You know, and I'm thinking, you know, as a faith-based Christian blogger guy, you know, very active in my church, you know, poverty that's something we should be concerned about, right? The Bible talks about we should take care of poverty, right? Uh, so. Uh, I, I think for me personally, it didn't really hit me how big of an issue it was until uh, I really started diving in and studying what poverty really looks like, what it really means, and and how we can address it. Um, and as I learned how we can address it, one of the things that uh, um, I kind of came across that I thought was really interesting was uh, this idea of uh, microfinance, right? These micro loans, right? It's just the it's the thing where you can give a hundred dollar loan to somebody in Africa so that they could buy. Uh, a sewing machine or some tools or something like that too so they can start creating work for themselves and become much more independent, right? Um, uh, so it's was, it was really fascinating work. So I found an organization that was doing this kind of work and and uh, um, I, I wrote a blog post about it. I said, hey, this issue of poverty and here's, here's the statistics and it's heart-wrenching and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, by the way, look, here's a solution, right? Here's a solution that I believe can actually work. Um, so I wrote a blog post about it too and included a little bit about this one organization that was doing this work and so I thought it's like you know let me just shoot them an email and let them know I wrote a blog post about it right so I started a relationship that uh, they started sharing more stories with me we ran a whole series of uh, the, the children of microfinance you know because we think that you know uh, the, the the single mom who gets a, a small loan so she can buy a sewing machine so she can be a seamstress tailor um, you know, she's the only one that benefits, but uh, but they started sharing these stories about uh, about the children and how it impacts their lives, right? They're not the ones getting the work, you know, but they definitely see the benefit of having a mom who can work, right? You know, and, um, you know, talking about how their lives are changed because they get to have meat and bread, you know? And uh, uh, so anyway, so I really kind of got into the work of this organization and they asked me to go on a trip, right? So we went on a trip to, to Kenya and Uganda um, uh, for about two weeks and we were doing uh, basic business skills training uh, for the people who were part of the programs right uh, because you know they believe that it wasn't enough to just uh, just, just make sure the loans are available and stuff and they were doing some creative things too so it wasn't necessarily even always them borrowing money it was people maybe saving their money in a pool and loaning it to each other and things like that um, but we, we believe that uh, in order for them to really succeed, they had to learn some things about, you know, hey, if I'm going to start working for myself, uh, how do I put together a basic business plan? How do I market my, my service and my skills to other people, right? Uh, so we went to go teach some of these skills uh, to the people. While I was there, uh, I, wrote, uh, I wrote daily trip journals for my blog. And those daily trip journals are what kind of became the foundation of this book, right? Uh, the unlikely missionary from Pew Warmer, poverty fighter, and um, uh, and the book isn't just those trip journals. But when I got back, I kind of took a look at it. I go, oh wow, that's a really cool story of you know what's going on in, in, in this in this little piece of piece of the world, and and how some people, a few people, are not fixing everything, but they're they're fixing certain pieces where they can, right? Um, and I realized that there was a bigger story kind of going on there too. Right? And as a Christian, it was, it was something about too, not even just the fact that we're dealing with poverty, but you know, like God was doing something else in my life and, and making me realize like, man, you know, any one of us, I'm just Dan, right? I'm just Dan. I, I, I work for you know, a big company and 
you know, and I go sit in my church each week and think that, you know, maybe, maybe if I if I can be an usher or something like that, you know, I'm, I'm making a difference, you know. But uh, but really, there's so many big problems out in the world, and you know, we can't we can't tackle all the big ones all by ourselves. But you know, I think if each of us does our own little piece, we can continue to chip away at it, right? You know, so that was the bigger story for me. I, started, I wrote that down, right? I wrote all that down and, and put that in the book uh, and put it out there. So then to jump back to that review, when I go on Amazon, I see somebody say, this story is not even worth writing. It just shattered me, right? Because I'm thinking, this is no way. You know, fortunately, around that same time, you know, as, as a blogger uh, who's releasing a book, you know, I have a lot of blogger friends that'll write reviews of my book on their blog and everything too, right? You know, and those, I appreciate their words and stuff, and, and I'm not minimizing that at all. They may actually mean what they really say, you know, <laughs> but um, but I know too that they're friends. You, you know what I'm saying? We have a relationship already and stuff too. But I noticed uh, a, a link back to my blog from a blogger that I didn't know, right? So I followed that through and went back to their blog and read it was a review on my book by this one blogger that I had, I had no idea who they were. I had no, looking around, I'm even trying to find connections. Like, do we follow each other on Twitter or something? Like, you know, whatever. Nothing, right? And, uh, and it was a lady who was preparing for her very first mission trip uh, to South Africa. And she said she read three books to prepare. Uh, she said she read a book by uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu, a book by Nelson Mandela and The Unlikely Missionary by Dan King, right? And she said the one that prepared her heart the most for that trip was The Unlikely Missionary by Dan King, right? And that for me made me realize when I look back at that one negative review, my story does matter, right? My story was worth writing down, right? And, uh, you know, so uh, haters are going to hate, right? How's that go? Yeah. Um, <laughs> It doesn't really matter because I know that it does make a difference. I even got an email uh, recently too, released the book gosh, about six years ago or so, I think. Um, and just in the last couple of months, I got an email from a single mom uh, who said the book stirred her in a way to make her realize, you know, her thing isn't necessarily going out on global missions somewhere and fighting poverty and stuff, but working with a local, you know, uh, um, uh, shelter for pregnant women from abused relationships and stuff. And I'm thinking, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, that book stirred her to a single mom who's probably already got a lot of her own stuff to deal with and everything to go do something like that and make a difference in her community. You know, I think about how she's able to connect with some of the women that she helps to, to go serve and everything. And it was, it was my story that kind of helped spur that a little bit. You know, I think that's one of the first things I want to I want to point out is, is that our stories, our stories matter, right? Uh, every one of our stories matters. It can make an impact and it has the power to drive change, okay? Uh, in mine, yeah, it was, it was, that piece of it was it had to do with, uh, you know, moving people to, uh, to be more involved in their communities and make a positive difference and stuff like that too. Uh, but really, stories at their core have the power to really drive change, right?